Hello, I'm Christopher Springman, and you're listening to Neff Talk, a podcast series created with nephrologists in mind from Satellite Healthcare, a not-for-profit dialysis provider that leads the industry in home therapies while supporting clinical research. Here's a headline I just love to read. Satellite Healthcare continues to increase its percentage of four and five star dialysis centers, according to the CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That's good news for patients, their families, nephrologists, and of course, the satellite healthcare employees who make this happen. Our next guest is quite proud of these accomplishments too. She is Brigitte Schiller, MD, Satellite Healthcare's Chief Medical Officer. Dr. Schiller, thank you so much for joining us today on Neff Talk. A pleasure to be here. We should really call this Neff Talk News. Congratulations, it's great. Thank you very much. Yes, we are indeed very proud and uh, happy about this achievement. This program has been in place for the past four years. While we have always been doing pretty well, uh, very well with uh, ratings, uh, we certainly have reached with the 70% of our centers having reached four and five star ratings this year. So yes, we're very happy. And I think we really need to say that this is an achievement of a lot of the passion of our employees who really work here at Satellite to help our patients to live the best life possible um, with a wonderful execution of then delivering ESRD care and also a quality strategy behind it to really ensure that uh, all these outcome measures can be achieved in the best possible way. What criteria does the CMS use to determine awarding a five-star quality rating, please? Yes, that's a very good question, and it's a complicated one. There are several metrics that go into the five-star ratings, and currently I think we can categorize them in probably five. One is its surrounding access. When you do hemodialysis, and these five-star ratings rely primarily for center dialysis, but also for PD programs alone. Those are peritoneal dialysis programs that provide PD for patients at home. Um, Access for hemodialysis is one of the criteria that are uh, measured, and this is in two ways. One is how many patients have central venous catheters and how many patients have the gold standard, which we consider AV fistulas. Another metric, a clinical metric, is how do patients receive adequate dialysis? And when we say adequate dialysis, we refer to a metric of how much urea do we remove from a patient's body with every single dialysis treatment. Um, There's another laboratory parameter, and that is um, how often do our patients have hypercalcemia, meaning too high levels of calcium. And then there are more complex metrics in there, and they are concerning um, longevity, How long do patients live? How often do patients go to the hospital? And the last one is how many patients do receive transfusions? And obviously when that does not work well, when patients are not controlled with the ESA by itself, they are dependent and require transfusions. So so those are the metrics. Access, adequacy, hypercalcemia, standardized mortality ratio, standardized hospitalization ratio, and transfusion. Dr. Schiller, what does a five-star rating mean to our listeners, especially nephrologists who may recommend a specific dialysis center to their patients? The way we think about the five-star ratings is really that they are an entry ticket. They're sort of the first thing that you see about a center. I think the world is changing. We have access to the Internet day in and day out. And so we all have adjusted our lives by getting used to ratings like Yelp, um, TripAdvisor, where we make our decisions based in our daily life based on ratings that are available. And so five-star ratings have really ubiquitously populated our routine daily life. And it's a very similar rating how they matter in dialysis. If you are living in an area where there are three and four and two-star and five-star centers, 
you will make decisions potentially based on those ratings. It's sort of the first metric that you might see. Nephrologists obviously want then beyond the metrics, they have the insight of how a center functions and they can make recommendations to their patients on their real life experience as well. It sounds to me like a five-star quality rating reflected in safe quality service for dialysis patients would give great peace of mind for family members and increased confidence for nephrologists in terms of the recommendations that they would make. Yes, I do think so. After this, obviously, comes the experience. When you think of some of these uh, metrics that go into the um, five-star, of course you expect that a center where you're going provides you with adequate dialysis. You wouldn't want anything below that. Um, Whenever you see a physician, you expect that you get the appropriate care. And so adequate dialysis is certainly one of those fundamental expectations. If we know that patients live better if they have permanent access for hemodialysis, meaning a fistula or graft, then if you're going into a center that has helped and achieved low catheter rates, despite the fact that maybe on entry the same amount of patients comes to the center with catheters, one center is more successful than the other to keep these numbers low by mechanisms that they have implemented. That's a good metric to have. If you know that centers have lower hospitalization rates, well, then obviously all these metrics are dependent on the mix of the patients, if we can achieve lower hospitalization rates with the kind of care that we deliver in the center, that is definitely what patients and physicians look for their patients. So you're really telling people what to look for in terms of a four or five star quality rating from CMS. You are anxious to have the patient and their family really engaged in this process because, frankly, once the choice is made, people and certainly their family members will be visiting that center, what, perhaps three to four times a week for three to four hours at a time. Is that accurate? Yes, that is correct. Again, I want to emphasize that I think an initial first approach of which center is the right one for me, there are a number Mm -hmm. of components that come into that play for a patient. Among them, and very important, is really the location of the center. As you just pointed out, Chris, a patient comes to the center three times a week. So if there's a long commute adding to the burden of undergoing dialysis, that is already a bigger disadvantage. But if it allows me to go to a center where I get indeed better care, then I think commuting is not as bad. And so we all make decisions in healthcare along the way that where do we get the best experience and the best care. And this is no different. Let me point out one thing where the five-star ratings now have been to some degree criticized, and there's obviously at the same time then an opportunity. We obviously Mm. want to make sure that these metrics that go into the ratings really are relevant for the patient. The problem we're facing with this is that we don't have as easy metrics for this. You know, how do you measure how the patient feels? How well do they get educated? How safe do they feel? How kind and compassionate is the care? How do they feel after dialysis treatments? A lot of these metrics will need to be developed over years to come, but there's a real push to even further increase the value of star ratings by making them more patient-centered and patient-specific. I imagine that you are anxious to sustain and build on your successes while bringing more satellite dialysis centers up to four and five star ratings. Is that a fair assumption on my part? That is a very fair assumption. Uh, We actually call this uh, our Michael Phelps initiative. How can you be the gold medal (laughs) winner seven times in a row? So we have done it now two years in a row where we had the highest percentage of four and five star ratings with 64% last year and 70% this year. And so you're absolutely right. The real issue for us now is to sustain this. This is challenging. I think we look at it this way. We have 
foundations lay based on our determination and a very strategic approach to ensure that we improve the outcome of our patients every day, every week, that we are eager to live this continuous quality improvement culture, that we look at processes that need to be improved. We have identified the root causes and have solved successfully for some of the problems, but we now need to have further on make sure that we have a focused approach of identifying now after the foundation is laid, where else is the opportunity for us to improve. I can understand why you're so passionate about this, because frankly, there is a lot at stake. Patients' lives, peace of mind, as I mentioned, for family members, your integrity, not only personally, but also as a company in terms of the confidence given you by nephrologists who ultimately make the decision where to place their patients. That is absolutely correct. We actually talk at Satellite a lot about humanizing dialysis. And what we mean by this is ensure, first of all, that highest quality care is delivered. And for that reason, we're very, very deep into quality improvement processes. We talk about this every day. We take it very serious, exactly like you say. This, uh, these people, our patients are mothers, fathers grandfathers, uncles and aunts, grandmothers, daughters and sisters um, of some people. They are not just a patient. They are in a network of love. They have meaning and they deserve the best care possible to live the life that they're hoping for with a challenging chronic disease, which needs to be eased and simplified and improved as much as possible. Thank you, Dr. Schiller. Thank you for joining us today on Neff Talk. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it.